Hi, everyone. Welcome to JLive. I'm Jay Arts Executive Director Laura Mandel, Tova Speeder, who is not only a talented artist and painter, but she's also an art therapist, founder of the MIM Project, through which she brings people together to explore Jewish identity and more. For me, Tova is the be all end all of community art facilitators, specifically in the Jewish world and beyond. She's worked with JArt since our inception, and we're proud to have her facilitate projects with us on a regular basis, including a major art uh, window installation project called Brighter Connected for this Hanukkah. More to come. Today is extra special because Tova is also one of the creative minds between, behind this whole JLive series. So I'm really excited to talk with her. If you have questions during the conversation, please share them in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, and I'll ask as many of them as time allows. So Tova, thank you for being here. Thank you um, so much for having me. Of course. So um, I'm just going to start off with a little something, which is I love how you intersect your sort of art and Jewish selves. So to kick us off, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure, of course. So um, for a really long time, I had two separate identities, my artistic um, and creative side, and then my, my Jewish side. And um, they existed really nicely separately. And then just over the years, they have found more and more ways to overlap and, and blend together. Um, it really started back in, I'd say around 2005, 2006. Um, I started teaching at Prose Door, which is a um, high school program for, for Jewish teens in the, in the area. And I was allowed to, to decide, you know, whatever classes I wanted to teach. So of course I wanted to teach Jewish art classes. And so we, we created art looking at Jewish texts and, and with Jewish inspiration. And the more classes I taught for the teens, the more I heard from friends of mine, oh, we want a class like that. Like, why can't, why can't we do that too? We want to engage with our Judaism in, in artistic ways as well. And so in 2010, I started the MEM project, which offers Jewish art workshops mainly to young adults in their 20s and 30s. Um, but that has grown to expand to, to all different ages as well. And, you know, everything sort of just snowballed from there. I, I've been working as a consultant with, with CJP, helping different congregations infuse more arts in their, in their programming and really using art as a, as a tool for reflection um, and deepening connection to, to Jewish ideals and, and values. And so uh, really for the past you know, 15 years, I've, I've been working full on in this intersection between the arts and the Jewish experience um, while still keeping you know, a lot of my, my original intent and uh, artistic aesthetic um, for myself as well. So it is no wonder that she's working with us a lot at J-Arts. So today, Tova is actually sitting in front of one of the selections from her translations show. And I would love for her to be able to tell us about it, both because I think it's a really interesting and cool concept of a project, and because unfortunately it's sitting in a gallery that's been uninhabited. So we thought we could bring it to you. So tell us about the project, Tova. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I am zooming in here to you from the gallery, um, which is, up with a beautiful show. Unfortunately, it can't be seen um, by too many people live right now. So I'm really grateful for this opportunity to, to share it with you. Um, so my own work um, is the, the work you see here, the painting on found wood. And I've been working in this style since 2002 when I discovered some pieces of wood thrown away in the dumpster outside my apartment. And I, I rescued them, I brought them into my apartment and I knew that I was gonna do something with them. I just didn't know what. And they sat and they sat for a really long time until I eventually realized that the reason I couldn't think of what to do with it is because um, the wood was just so beautiful on its own. And so since then I've been painting in this style, um, as you can maybe see from the piece behind me, that every line I paint is a line that's actually naturally in the wood. So I'm bringing forth the different natural grain patterns. Um, I'm just choosing which ones to, to pull back or forward with different color. And in my most recent work, um, as you can see here, I've also been playing with layering stencils. Um, and so in this one, I created a stencil of a uh, tree and, um, and, and placed that onto the work. I painted it how I usually do in my style and then peeled it off at the end to expose um, still in that natural wood um, the image that you see there. So I had this great idea when I turned um, when I turned 40 um, a few years ago to create 40 works um, 
in my 40th year and then have a big exhibit with it. And I quickly realized that that was a little bit too ambitious. And so this exhibit is 10 works that I created. And then I enlisted three other friends who are three of the most amazing, inspiring artistic women uh, who I know. And we created chains of artwork together. So with each of the four of us creating 10 pieces, um, we have the 40 works um, for this exhibit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share my screen so I can walk you through. I'm gonna show you a couple of those, of those chains. Um, do that right here. Okay, so when you walked, if you were to walk in the gallery, this is what you would see on the wall. The, the title of the show is Translations and it's a chain of painting, poetry, mosaic and assemblage. And in addition to me, the other artists represented are Maya Bernstein, Emily Bargava and Maria Beatriz Arbello. So what we did was I started with my piece of work, uh, my painting. And I sent that over to, to the next artist, to Maya. And just with this image and the title, Maya created a poem inspired by this work. So this one is called Long Night Moon. And what Maya did was she created a, a, a poem here, which I will, I will read for you in case it's hard to see. So this is called Long Night. Is it my moon rising in full long view? my shimmering orb aglow above the lapping waters? Or is it merely a reflection of some brighter star? Or perhaps it is the cold moon's long light leaving me yearning, exposed adrift beyond the sea. So she created this piece just um, having seen my, my work as her inspiration. And this is where the fun began. So then what we did was I took her poem and sent just the poem without my piece um, to Emily, who created a mosaic pendant inspired just by the poem. And what became amazing was seeing how there was something in the translation through the different modalities that really connected um, and, and combined through. Because if you look back you know, from, from the poem, but look back to my artwork as well, you can see she may as well have been creating that in response to my artwork, right? Even though she never saw it, she didn't see the color, she didn't see the, the moon up there, um, but there was something in the energy that, that translated. So then it went to the fourth artist, Maria, just the mosaic, and she created this. It's a natural assemblage with a, a stone um, that she found in Gloucester and, um, and an old um, wood root ball kind of situation. Um, and again, if you look back um, to the different inspirations, it's just really amazing um, how they all really live together and are connected. And I think that's where sort of the, the beauty really came from this exhibit is to see all of them together and how they interplay and talk to each other. So it was only when we got all the pieces into the gallery that we recognized um, really the essence and the, and the energy that we had. And it's a little bit, you know, all of my work, I, I can relate a little bit to different Jewish ideals and, and values. And with this one, I, I feel like it really connects, um, the idea of this project really connects to the theme of kihila, community, and also midrash, right, interpretation. And so here we have all these different interpretations inspired by each other. And it's really when you look at them collectively that you see everything from a new perspective and you get a much deeper experience of, of the subject or the, or whatever. So I'll show one more um, and then we can talk. A Before bit. she shows that, I'm just gonna say that I had the good luck of going to the gallery, I think on the very last day that I could before the world shut down. And it was magical to me. I mean, truly magical that I could see these pieces that had been inspired one by the other and that you can see elements of each of those pieces in the chain, even though the person responding had only seen the one previous. Um, and it just was totally magical to me in the colors and the shapes. I mean, I just think, you know, Tova, you've created such a beautiful thing here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and I'll say too that um, the exhibit follows through the, the season. So it starts started there on, on my birthday, the, uh, the winter solstice with that painting of the, of the full moon on that day. 
um, a, a couple of years ago. But as you walk through the gallery, you go through the different seasons. So you go through two pieces um, representing winter, um, two for spring, two for summer. This one behind me is, is one from summer, um, and then two from fall. And so this piece that I'm sharing now on this screen is, uh, is obviously from fall. This is called Falling Forward. Um, and Maya's um, poem here is called A Deciduous Conditional. If indeed we all faded are to fall, then a plea. May our destiny tree release us gently, and we leaf like, glowing golden, all a flutter, dancing as we descend. So, and you'll see, you know, where the shadows come into play in that image. Um, in a, in a minute, but that one again was inspired by, by my piece, which was again those stencils and then the, the, the painting is really following the, the natural grain of the wood. This is the mosaic that Emily made in response to the poem and you know, it's just, we couldn't believe it when we saw these all coming together. I mean, looking at that, the colors and how, you know, that it's a vertical piece as opposed to anything else. I mean, there's so much about it. That is, um, that is so connected, even though she didn't see that original inspiration. And this is um, the assemblage, the natural assemblage from Maria, which is suspended from the ceiling of the gallery um, and, and leaves hanging down. And again, when you look at them all um, together and see the journey of where they came, I mean, it's just, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so we were really excited to, to see all these come together. And I would encourage everybody, if you're interested, um, we can share the, the link. You can see all of the work online um, and, and be able to read more about each piece and hear Maya, you know, read her poems in her own voice and, uh, and all of that. And um, we are looking forward to the day when the gallery can open again. Hopefully it will be coming soon, at least by appointment, that people will be able to, to come in and uh, enjoy the space. And, and Tova, there's actually a great question here, which is when you um, brought the pieces from one artist to the next, what did you give them? Just an image? Was there the name of the piece? What were they given? So that's a great question. So they were just given the image. It was all digital, you know, we, we did it all digital and, and via email, but they were just given the image and the title. And that's it. No explanation, nothing other than that. And they were only given the title of the piece before. So, you know, Maria, who made these hanging leaves, didn't know that my title was falling forward. She only knew the, the title of, the, of Emily's piece, which I think was falling leaves, um, actually. But yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So I can, I can stop the share here for a minute. Um, if we want to talk about um, anything else, Laura, another question, or I can Absolutely. share other work as well. Um, let's go ahead, show us something else. Okay, awesome. Um, so after, you know, our, um, our exhibit closed down and, um, and we weren't able to, to gather anymore, I mean, it's just, Laura knows this about me and, and maybe some of you do too. I am a community artist um, at heart, so I'm a community muralist. Everything I do is engaging other people in the art making um, experience. And so it was really hard when all of my work suddenly stopped and I couldn't gather people together again. And so we really, you know, I talked with the other um, women who were involved in this exhibit and, and just for us having recognized the power of connection um, having participated in, in art in a collaborative way. Um, and I'll say that none of the other women didn't know each other at all. I knew all of them, but none of them knew each other. And now they, they feel a very strong connection to each other based on having received each other's artwork. And so I started an online version of translations for the community to all participate um, in their own way, in their own modality, and to sort of be able to share some chains of positive energy, a way to feel connected and, um, and a part of something bigger, even when we were all isolated. So I'll share some of those, um, some of those chains now as well. Okay, so, so the title is, uh, you know, Translations, Chains of Positive Energy, which I, I didn't even realize when, when naming it. I, it was a couple weeks later that I, that I even recognized that the, the um, abbreviated abbreviated into the word cope, C-O-P-E, which was another just fortuitous um, happening that really 
helped validate that this was going in the right direction. <laughs> and, uh, and You're an art therapist through and through. <laughs> even, even subconsciously, right? And so what we did here is I asked um, artists, you know, the people could sign up and um, I'll let you guys all know about a way that, that you can engage with this as well at the end. Um, but the, the, the prompt was for people first to share a word or phrase that help, uh, that describes a quality or mindset that helps them get through these challenging times. And so, um, so that's where that's where we started. Different people submitted um, submitted a word, and everything went through me. And the word, you know, was then sent to the next artist to respond in their modality. So the first word that we have is here is listen. This was sent to uh, to an artist named Suzanne Hodis, and um, she wrote about her piece. This is a mixed media sketch. She wrote, listen to the life around us, the birds, the wind, the rustle of leaves. In my landscape, I want the viewer to listen to the waves sliding against the rocks and the sounds of the water propelled by the wind. So that was her explanation of this, but, but I didn't send that explanation to the next artist. I only sent the image and the title, and that's all that the next artist got. So here, you know, Suzanne went just from the word listen. So that image went to Cindy Brithka Marshall, who wrote this, this poem, hunkered down like a turtle drawn into a shell or a bear snuffling in a cave, yet sentient still, aware of the crackling green buds, the wind blowing blue fragrance, awaiting the vivid bloom to ease the way. And she called this hunkered down. So that came from, from an image, but it's amazing that, you know, that could very well have come directly from from the, from the word, right? We, we don't know. But the idea of this was to have seven different links, seven translations um, representing the seven days of the week that are you know, kind of hard to get through during these times. And so here, um, that poem was translated into colored pencil on paper by Courtney. This is called Waiting. And each of these, I mean, I can, I can read through them if you want, but each of them, when you read the, the reflection and the sentiment behind them, adds a whole layer of depth because, you know, you can see where people were inspired and, um, and what inspired them uh, as well. So, I mean, I love looking at this one with the others along the way because the colors and connection of that gray with the color around it really connects to Suzanne's piece right, of, uh, of, of listen and that mixed media sketch, even though, even though she, hadn't, um, she hadn't seen that. So, so Courtney had just mentioned that the poem um, to her described the actions of animals retreating into a safe space, and that reminded her of the current Safer at Home advisory, and how our homes are acting as our shields while we watch life continue outside. While the danger isn't visible, we can feel its presence around us. So this was sent to Josh Meyer, who will be featured um, in an upcoming J Live episode. So stay tuned, his work is amazing. Um, and so he created this oil, and this is a self-portrait. And he, he said this was the first sustained self-portrait he had painted over many days and many iterations after the world shut down. And so he said it speaks to a, a new pace of his studio and the, the funny way time has of, of pushing us around. But again, just looking, that in place was inspired by, by waiting, which was inspired by hunker down and listen and, and on and on. And so there became these growing chains um, really of such interesting translations through different modalities. This one is a, is a collage. Um, and, and they're so impactful, I think on their own, they're really strong pieces similar to in my exhibit. Each, you know, each piece that we created was really amazing on its own, but all together, you know, they really, um, they really shine through. And the last, um, the last word here, so, so Susan Epstein just got that piece before, that untitled collage, and she translated that into enlightenment. And so the, the fun part for me is to look through and to see how listen can translate to enlightenment. So for each of the chains, you see that first word and the last word and, and what comes in between. So I have and I can tell you all that I have not made art myself in many, many years, unfortunately. But one of the reasons Tova and I originally connected was because we both paper cut. And so she encouraged me to join this chain um, and do a paper cut. And I have to admit, 
it was on a really, really difficult week back in June when really everything had just come to a head with, with COVID. And it forced me to, to create. And it was one of the most positive experiences for me of the past four or five months that she pushed me to create something. And it felt so special, both, both to be thinking creatively, but also to be a part of this was just really something incredible. And I encourage anybody watching this to participate because it's a pretty amazing experience. So, so Laura, sorry to interrupt. I know we're running out of time. So yeah really quickly, but I just want to share with everyone the chain that Laura was a part of. So I won't read all of the explanations and whatnot, but this chain was started uh, with a quote, sometimes you meet yourself back where you started, but stronger. And I'll just go through quickly so that you can see, although really it's it's worth to, to read the, the words from these artists. This is Allison Judd, who's also a J-Arts board member. Um, and so just to, to look through um, how the translations happen, and you can see these all on the on the website, but the the strength, uh, no pun intended, this one is actually called yeah. strength, but the strength of the work is really in seeing um, what elements an artist picks up on, and then that carry through, and then that circle back. So here you can see those little flowers in John's work after the storm, which were picked up by those little flowers um, in, in Maria's work. And, um, and then this is a, is a poem by, by Gavi. And, you know, in her explanation, I'll just, you know, I'm, I won't read the poem right now, but, but she was really struck by the tiny flowers blossoming from the side of the rock in the midst of the storm. And so, you know, it's just so interesting to see what elements different people pick up on and carry back through, because that's in a lot of what Maria said too, and her description was about those, the protection of those of those flowers. And so here's Laura's, um, here's Laura's paper cut. Um, so Laura, you are now the artist <laughs> being interviewed as well. But this is what Laura created in response to, to that poem. And Laura, do you want to say anything else about, about your work? Well, I just think that, I mean, obviously I was very front and center with the line, the storm does not rage in perpetuity because that came out of Gavi's poem. And that just felt so important to me to remember in that moment when it was a really, really awful week, this is not going to be forever and that there will be a new normal and we'll have to get there. Um, but that just felt really important to me at the time. Um, and so I obviously pulled a lot of imagery out of that. And it was amazing to me how it kind of connected to all the other pieces in the chain without me knowing it. And that, that work, Laura, that you made, which is, is really beautiful, was translated um, by Caitlin to be still and know that I am loved. And so here we had this idea of, you know, getting back to yourself, but stronger in the beginning and that translating into, into being still and knowing that I am loved. So just, you know, lots of examples here um, and a lot of depth. It's hard to go through so quickly, but I would encourage everyone to, uh, to go to the go to the website and um, Laura will maybe put the the link in there or we'll, yep. we'll send the follow up um, as well and and I would just say yep. um, to you know at the end one one other piece is that I actually my goal is to have made fourteen different chains representing the fourteen days of suggested quarantine before before we reemerge and right now there are eleven on the site and the last three are in process but. I still need two more people to um, to actually be the be the ones to to do that final translation. So it, it doesn't mean necessarily making artwork, but being interested in receiving artwork and then writing down a word or phrase that you would translate that into. So if anybody is interested, now is the time. And if not now, um, you know, we sometimes say if not now, when, but in this case, it's if not now, in the fall, I'm gonna restart the project um, in a new way. So you can feel free to um, express interest in participating and get involved then as well. And I should also share that this show, as it stands where Tova's sitting right now, um, was intended to go into the gallery at Maim Chaim this season. Um, but because we know that we'll not have hours like it normally would, we're pushing it back a little bit. So Tova will also have another iteration of this in the gallery in the spring. So. With actually with some site specific work. So there may be one or two of these chains that we feature there, but um, the other artists and I are, um, are working now on creating um, some chains inspired by water and other elements such as that. Great. So I think we could talk to Tova about a hundred other projects for the rest of the day. Um,
Um, but I love that you left us with a little something that we can all participate in potentially. I think it's really great. So thank you for letting me participate and for bringing it to all of us. Um, so, all right, I, this time flies by. Um, I just want to remind everyone that tomorrow night, Tuesday, July 21st, we will have music with multi-instrumentalist Yoni Batat, who is just a wonderful friend and um, musician fan of J Arts. On Friday, July 24th, we have Chef Michael Leviton, who is the chair of the 2020 Taste of Israel Restaurant Week, um, as well as other things around town. He will be cooking and, con and in conversation with us. And last but not least, of course, as the J Arts tagline says, let culture connect us. J Live is connecting us, but to make this possible, we rely on generous community support like yours. If you love what you're seeing, please consider making a donation. Um, Toba, thank you so much. This was so much fun, and we'll have to do multiple other sessions to talk about all your other work. So thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. Have a great one. See y'all soon. <laughs>